Good evening, Lori. Good evening, Chris. I know both of you just joined our call. Uh, as you're getting settled, uh, the welcome screen in front of you has uh, a, a couple questions. Um, if there's anything that you would like to enter in the chat um, for special prayers, feel free to do that. Um, maybe the name of people you want to pray for and what do they need prayers for? So in preparation for our session, I'm going to go ahead and mute all of us just for the opening prayer and um, just the beginning introductions. And then from there, I will <clears throat> unmute as we go through the presentation. I do invite you, though, as we spend our time together to, <clears throat> unless you're asking a question, please put yourselves on mute just so the, uh, as, since we're recording this session, the background noise isn't. Um, isn't captured in our recording. <clears throat> okay. Uh, as you enter into the space, if you haven't already, go ahead and enter in uh, any people that you want to pray for today and go ahead and let us know what are some of the things that uh, you want us to pray for. The way we've created this session is that we wanted it to somewhat mirror what you would do in a religious education session, something you would do with your you know, third or fourth graders. And so we've set it up where there's a welcome screen uh, we'll do opening prayer, and then we'll go over the format of our time together, and then we'll do some practice as a group, and we'll go into this a little bit more. And then we'll have time for small group sharing. We'll, we'll use the breakout room function, and so you'll know how to use that. And then from there, we will uh, kind of close up and share practical tips, and you'll learn a little bit more about how we want to continue to support you this fall as you move forward um, in your religious education year. So my name is Clarissa Alhantara and I work in the Office of Lifelong Faith Formation. And uh, I am one of the two co-presenters, facilitators for the Zoom training tonight. Uh, I'm joined by um, Emily MacDonald. And uh, the way we're gonna do this session is that one of us is going to do a little teaching and then another one of us is going to do the other teaching and then we're going to take turns monitoring the chat and the waiting room and all that good stuff uh one of the things that we found in setting up our meetings in the office of lifelong faith formation is it it's been helpful to have another adult or another person on the call who knows kind of how to use zoom and can kind of do the background stuff like at answering stuff on um in the chat room or questions or helping moderate the room and so uh that's also the way we're, we're kind of modeling our time together today so with that we'll go ahead and start with our session um so what you see here is uh what you saw on that first page is the welcome screen as we're kind of coming into the space imagine you know all the, the students are coming into your room and uh, maybe they're typing stuff in chat, uh, you know, prayers or anything that, that you know, they, they kind of want to share before the, the day begins. And so our opening screen that we've got in front of us now talks a little bit about um, the opening prayer as a bell ringer activity. So something that you could do right at the beginning. Um, the welcome screen can also be used to introduce the class uh, to a new topic of discussion. Uh, you can definitely use the, the welcome screen to propose a question for personal reflection or something that people will be sharing during their class time. Uh, you can also use this screen to list student roles. And so uh, you'll kind of see the way in which we do opening prayer. Uh, we assigned opening uh, prayer roles for Emily and I. Uh, the other thing that you can kind of do with a welcome screen is maybe there's a a famous Catholic image or painting that you want to start your class with, or even maybe something from the liturgical season that might be a, a good way to kind of utilize 
our uh, opening screen as students are getting settled um, for the evening. So what we decided to do for our opening prayer was do something around the solemnity of the Assumption of Mary. And what we're doing is um, Emily and I have assigned ourselves different sections of the prayer and we will go ahead and, and we will begin with prayer. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, so as we begin this prayer, let's keep in mind all of uh, the intentions that we shared with each other in the chat as we were waiting and all those intentions that we hold in our heart and maybe we did not get to share. So I'm going to start with this section one, Clarissa will do section two, and then we'll ask everyone to join in with that glory to the Father, that's section three. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, as it was, as it was in the beginning, is, is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Uh, thank you again so much for being here with us. This is our Zoom training session for catechetical leaders and catechists. Uh, we have heard uh, a lot in the field in terms of getting to know some of the tools. And so the Office of Lifelong Faith Formation is holding both Zoom trainings and Teams training. So this week is Zoom and next week is Teams. The training tonight, we're expecting to last just over an hour, maybe like an hour 20, an hour 30, give or take, after you factor in uh, questions and answers. But if you do need to leave at any time, kids' bedtimes, something else, uh, know that we're recording it, and we will follow up with an email uh, with the recording and PowerPoint slides and an evaluation so you can let us know uh, that we can maybe uh, improve something for next week's trainings with teams. So during our time together, uh, we had sent out a preview video, kind of like a pre-homework, and I know some of you probably got the video late in the afternoon, and I imagine have not had a chance to watch it, and that is completely okay. But some of the things we're going to go through quickly today are um, basic meeting setup, kind of how to set up a schedule, uh, set the time for a meeting, practice, you know, muting yourselves and unmuting yourselves and looking at the video, you know, the video piece of this. Then we're going to talk about Catholic identity in virtual spaces and kind of using our technology to recreate a classroom that could, you know, showcase the, the Catholic, image, Catholic images and symbols. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to meeting management tools. So we're going to look at breakout rooms and polls and different ways in which you can kind of continue to uh, engage your students in a meaningful way. Uh, from there, we're gonna do ongoing support. We're gonna talk about, we've got some office hours, virtual office hours that we're gonna set up and there's still continued trainings that are going until probably the beginning of September. And so you'll get all of that information at the end of our class. The last part of our time is gonna be used for questions and answers. Uh, so if you've got any like last minute questions, feel free to it's ask. It's like them. really cold. That's um, why. Uh, the other thing that we can do as we're spending time together is if there's something that comes up, you can go ahead and type it in the chat function. That way uh, it's a thought that is not saved. And what we found last time was that there are a couple of questions that people had that we didn't get a chance to answer sufficiently and so we did some research and then emailed a list of those questions and answers out to uh, the folks who that participated in Monday's call and so we will do our best to get to get answers and get things back to you 
Uh, and from there, uh, we're going to talk about one of the important things, obviously, as we're transitioning into the Zoom and Teams world is always thinking about how to keep our parents and our uh, children safe. And so we'll go over some basic virtual safety guidelines. We do have some more guidelines that are going to be forthcoming. Um, and we're continuing to work on that. But in the meantime, uh, I'll go ahead and list some of the top important uh, virtual safety guidelines. Um, the first one, individuals responsible for religious education and youth ministry programs and activities operated by the Archdiocese must be in full compliance with the Archdiocese of Chicago safe environment requirements and code of conduct, notwithstanding the fact that the programs are also being delivered virtually. Employees, volunteers, and participants must model mature, safe online behavior for and maintain healthy boundaries with minors. Uh, conduct virtual classes and sessions and meetings in accord with the electronic communications guidelines and if applicable, special rules for group messaging apps in the OPCY code of conduct. All group calls or video conferences with minors must include an adult who is safe environment compliant. This includes breakout rooms and uh, breakout rooms from larger group meetings. The other thing is publicize all class and meeting dates or other activities ahead of time and on a regular schedule, ensuring that the nature, date, and time of activities are known to your supervisor at the parish as well as parents. Well, one of the things that we found is that uh, using the waiting room on all of the meetings kind of prohibits participants from um, from entering without you knowing and then it kind of can help maintain attendance records for gatherings uh, so that is something that you might consider using uh, during your time for you if you do choose to use zoom so from there i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to emily and she's going to walk us through uh, the next few slides thanks Carissa. um would you also mind putting the powerpoint in our presentation view just so we're seeing one slide at a time Thank you. Perfect, thank you. All right, so this is just some basic um, setup functions that we wanna review. If you watch the video beforehand, um, most of these were covered in there, but we're just gonna take some time to re-go over these. Uh, so the first one is accessing the login. So for you yourself logging into Zoom, uh, you want to, first of all, make sure you've set up an account before you try to log in. And then you go to the top right and you click on your sign in. You put in your email and your password. And from there, you should be able to access your profile. So from this screen, once you've logged in, you'll be able to go on and do everything like view your profile, set up meetings, look at your settings for all your meetings. And so that'll be your home base. Um, once you've set up a meeting, which we're gonna go through after some of these basic functions, and you're actually in it, uh, there are different ways you can view your screen uh, and instruct your students to view the screen uh, to make for the best learning experience possible. So we're also gonna show you what the different examples look like side by side and go through when those might be the best choice for you. Um, and then the third thing that we want to point out from that video is just entering the room muted and encouraging your participants to do the same. That way you enter in, uh, no matter whether you're coming from the beginning or if people have already started talking in the meeting, you're not coming in and disrupting what's going on or your participants aren't coming in and disrupting what's going on. They can get a sense of what's happening and then always unmute themselves. The function of the speaker, um, that's gonna be you in these cases, uh, is also able to mute all the participants. So if you're getting a lot of background noise or it's a time when students are supposed to be reflecting and someone's forgotten to turn off their mic, you have the ability to mute all the participants and that would be a good use for that. So for, oh. Sorry about that. I am assigning breakout rooms. Don't mind me. Okay. Um, so all of those first three basic functions were covered in the 
uh, pre-video that we sent out, but does, since those um, are something that you're gonna be using pretty frequently during your meetings, we wanted to address those. Um, and like I said, we're gonna show you the different speaker views side by side and upcoming slides. And we're also gonna have you practice um, muting and unmuting yourself, as well as controlling your video and looking at your audio settings. So stay tuned for those. Um, so the next big thing we wanna talk about is scheduling a meeting. So when you're scheduling a meeting, um, you'll pull up a screen and it'll have you enter some information. So the first, thanks Clarissa, the first um, field that you'll see is the top topic. Uh, and so that's what you type in. We recommend doing a title that's descriptive enough that you'll know what it is, especially if you have different sections or different classes, uh, so you can quickly know which meeting is which. Uh, then you're gonna pick a date um, and a time whenever your meeting would normally be. The really important feature in this date is gonna be this reoccurring meeting button. So if you always meet Tuesday nights at seven, you can set that to automatically generate meetings every Tuesday night at seven. Um, another important feature here is if you have a class that meets, let's say Mondays and Wednesdays, and it depends on the week when it's meeting, it's a little bit more flexible. If you want to make your meeting schedule more flexible, you can pick the recurring meeting uh, option that, um, little button there, <laughs> you fill that in, and it'll give you a drop down list of options. And so one of them, if you go to the bottom, it says um, no fixed time. And so that would be a good option if your meeting changes times depending on the week or depending on the day of the week and you want just a more flexible meeting there. Um, and then your meeting ID, you wanna generate that automatically. And the next really important one is the password. Because of the nature of our meetings with uh, our young people, we wanna make sure that these are safe spaces, that people who are not supposed to be in these meetings can not, not get in there. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the password is required for all the meetings that you're setting up. Uh, next, you'll have some video options. So this is whether you'll be able to have your own video on and your participants on, we recommend both of those being on. And so, here, Clarissa, will you go back for a minute? Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and then your audio as well, um, whether you want to be students to be able to call in with telephone, computer, or either. Um, and then the last one that might be helpful too is on your calendar, but, or sorry, in the calendar section, you can automatically add your Zoom meetings to a calendar you have on your computer. So just to help you stay more organized. Um, during this advanced options section at the bottom here, that's where you get options like uh, enabling your waiting room, which we recommend doing as Clarissa said, um, you get options to mute participants when they enter. So that's what we talked about earlier. People come into the muting without their volume on. And so that way if students get knocked out and have to come back in. They're not coming in in the middle of something, someone sharing or you sharing. Um, before we move on, does anyone have any questions about specifically scheduling a meeting? Um, yes, I have a I have a question. Yes. When, when, when we use the Zoom this summer um, with Mar Intensive Program, uh, I'm sorry, this is Junie Brunk from St. Mary's in. Hi, Junie. Yeah, yeah. Um, we um, did not use a waiting room because we didn't want children, um, young people, talking when no, there was no one there. So we we did not use a, a waiting room. Um, also, we didn't schedule reoccurring meetings. We scheduled the meetings to be um, released, uh, you know, like at 5.30 that morning, 5.30 or 6 o'clock that morning. So th there was less chance of people coming in and doing that bombing, you know, that Zoom bombing. So just a thought, you know, that, that's the advice that we gave our catechist. So great point. So the first one, the waiting room, um, it's not a room where everyone else can talk to each other. You're just not there. It shows up on their screen like, you're waiting to join 
the Zoom training meeting, the host will admit you when she's ready or when they're ready. So it's not like all the students are in one spot without you, but that's a great point to raise because that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, and as for setting up the meeting uh, the day of, yes, that's an option um, if you're trying to really make sure that only your students have access to it. We just want to make sure that if you're doing that, then your pastor knows that that scheduled Zoom invite is going to go out then, and so they can be on the same page of when things are occurring. All right, so what they would do is they would post it in the Google Classroom that morning. Oh, so, great. Yeah. And certainly the pastor has signed off on all of this. Yeah, okay, good. Perfect. So that's great, Jeannie. Okay, okay. thanks, Emily. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on scheduling a meeting? Yeah, I have a question. What would happen, it's Sister Nadia from St. Catherine Labore. What would happen if somebody uses the link, uh, for example, I schedule a meeting at Monday 7 p.m., uh, but somebody clicks on it on 5 p.m., uh, will they have access? Because usually I, 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 I think I get notification that somebody is using the link and is in waiting room or something. So, so that's a, is this time really relevant to anything? So that's a great question, um, sister. So how it works is they can click on the link whenever they receive it. So let's say you sent me the meeting link and I was at five, like you were saying, I could click on it at five. It won't let me into the meeting until you have started the meeting. So even though I'm trying to click on the link and I wanna to go to the meeting, if you have a waiting room set up, I still won't be able to get into the meeting. The okay. email that the email that you're saying is a notification that Zoom sends out. So it's kind of a reminder um, system they put in place that lets you know that you have someone trying to join a meeting. And if they're trying to join it early, that would be when I would uh, reach out to that parent and be like, oh, our meeting's scheduled for seven. I see you're trying to reach out now. Uh, just so you're in communication with them. It just helps you know that they thought it was a different time. Mm -hmm. But that's another reason why the waiting room is a good feature to enable. Right. Without waiting room, they can actually join and start talking to each other, or uh, especially if the kids are without the supervisor, it could be a source of a lot of problems. Yeah, so without the waiting room, if they click on the link um, early, both the students at the same time, then they can be in there they can chat with each other and say hi mm -hmm. let's meet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you good. yes good point to bring that up all right anyone else um yeah mary kozlowski from christ our savior mary um when i hit schedule will that take me into my email such that i can send out the email to these people um so when you hit how do i trigger the email uh, so when you hit schedule, it's just scheduling it in your Zoom. Um, okay. If you want to send out an email, what I recommend doing is hitting schedule. Uh, sorry, I have my other computer going on just so I make sure that I'm giving you the right steps too. Um, and then one of the options on Zoom, it'll list the topic, it'll list the time that you scheduled, the meeting ID, and then one of them will be the meeting invitation. Okay. So that's what you want to copy and send out to everyone. And that'll have the link and the password in it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? All right, Clarissa, we're good to go. Okay, so this is the different screen views we were talking about. Uh, the first one is the active speaker view. So this is good if someone is presenting or if you are leading a lesson and you want the focus to be on whoever is the one doing the talking. That means that they will fill up your screen um, and it will be a full screen view of the main person talking. Um, this is a really good option uh, to encourage your students to use when you're the one talking for a lesson or um, you want students to focus on one person sharing instead of being distracted by different people doing different things in their cameras. Uh, the other option is a gallery view. So this is where you can see all the cameras at once, or sorry, all the Zoom participants at one time. And so this is great for taking attendance or if you are doing a discussion with everyone and people are chiming in back and forth, 
it's also good if you're asking your students to hold up visual symbols um, so then everyone can be seeing what they're seeing at one time. So you can't control how your students are viewing it, but you can recommend to them which view to be in. Um, so if you want to change your own view, you go to the top right corner of your Zoom and it lets you change how you're viewing it. So right now we are all uh, watching Clarissa present her screen. So it's a little bit off different. It's not either of those two. Uh, when you're presenting, you have two options. So one is the presentation can be the big screen in the middle and you can have kind of a small gallery view either on the top or the side of your screen. Or you can switch it so the presentation is small and the speaker is in the large uh, portion. Normally when you're presenting something like a PowerPoint like Carissa is doing right now, I would encourage your students to have that as their larger screen. Okay. Oh, I guess, do we wanna do any questions on screen views before we move on, I'm sorry. All right, go ahead, Clarissa, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about audio and video, and then we're gonna do our first practice of the night. So your audio and video are two of the most important things um, when you're on the Zoom meeting. It's what allows you to be seen and uh, be heard. So these are always gonna be found in the bottom left corner of your Zoom screen. The mute button uh, determines if you are heard or not, not if you can hear. So right now you all can hear me because I'm not muted, even if you're muted. So with that function, it's great right now, like if you wanna be talking and have everyone else making sure they're listening for them to be in the mute function. But then when we are doing discussions, maybe I'll mute myself to make sure that the other person can be heard. So, um, and then the next one right next to it is the video. Same thing, something might happen where the student needs to go off the video or you need to go off the video. Uh, and so it's the same thing just right next to it, stop the video if you want to stop sharing your screen. Uh, something else important to note for this is at any point you can turn as the you as the host can turn off everyone's mics. Uh, you can turn off any individual's uh, camera as well. So if you hear someone who has forgotten to mute themselves while someone else is talking in your participant section, you can mute them. If you see someone whose screen doesn't reflect something that you want showing to the other students, you can turn off their video. Um, you can invite students to unmute themselves, but you can never invite or try to turn on a student's video camera if it's already off. Um, and so we're gonna have you guys practice um, and then we'll take any questions on this. So just everyone take a turn. Um, Practice turning on and off your mute button and see if you can hear yourself speaking. Normally when you turn off your mute button um, and you try to talk, or sorry, normally when you turn on your mute button and you try to talk, you'll get a notification on your screen saying, your mute button's on, something like that. And go ahead and practice with your video as well. So do both of those for me. Hello. I'm gonna practice too. Can I hear myself? Yes. Oh, there it is. I can hear myself. Okay. Did you process it? Yes. yes. One, two, three. Yes. Yes. Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Hi. Yes, there I am. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hi, this is Sharon. But I don't see me. Yes. One, two, three. God is good. <laughs> good evening. Amen. Hi, Sharon. Okay. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Hi, <laughs> great to see you. Hi. This is awesome. You guys are doing a great job. Okay. Hello, Sister Nadia. Long time no see. Yes, yes. I was going to say hello, Sister. How are you? Long time. Long time. Yeah. Fifteen minutes ago. Hi, Zenobia. Hi, Mary. I don't see myself, though. I see you, Zoe. I see you. Oh, you do? Good. 
I turned my camera off so you can't see me. Uh, How are you? Off. All right. And my camera hasn't been working for months. So okay. it's nice to be incognito sometimes, though. <laughs> That's true. Also, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you want to set up your background to either show a picture of yourself or a relig or sorry I said background uh, your profile picture on zoom uh -huh. to show either a religious background or a picture of yourself that way even if your video gets turned off then they can see um, an image there representing you so I think this is Ernesto right now has a background a religious background as his um, picture there there it is all right all right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is mute everybody again. So thank you. Everyone's going to be muted. Um, again, if you want to ask a question, when we get to that point, you can unmute yourself there. Um, so something I just want to share as the host while everyone's doing that, uh, if you have your participants tab open, so this is if you click on the bottom of your screen, one of the icons will say participants. If you have that open up on the side, you can see who has their mic open, who, sorry, who has their mute button on or off, who has their video on or off. And it just helps you keep tabs that way as well. Because I know for me, when I'm in presenter mode, I can only see a certain amount of people's uh, little faces on the screen. But if I have my participants open on the side, I can see a good portion of them over there. All right. Does anyone have any questions about turning your audio or video on, muting yourself, or turning your camera on and off? Yes. Yes. Could you repeat again? How do you put? Uh, can you cancel the video for everyone? The uh, so for the the video, you can't cancel it for everyone at once, like you can the mute button. But that you can go to an individual person and turn theirs off. Um, Marsha, I see that you have your hand raised. Can I use you for an example for a second? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go with Marsha. So let's say that I want Marsha's video to stop sharing. On my participants tab, since I'm the host, I go over to Marsha's name and I hit the more button. And one of my options is to stop video. And so if I click that, then her video will disappear. Um, for mute or unmute all, um, same thing, you go to the participants tab, but this time just at the bottom of it, one of the options is to mute all. Does that answer your question, Ernesto? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Marcia, you have your hand up. So how would we do what Ernesto is doing? Uh, so how would we show? Great question. There's two options depending on what you want to do. So one is to have your uh, profile picture changed in Zoom. So on your Zoom account, um, one of the options on the side, one of them is meetings, one of them settings, one of them is profile. And so if you click on the profile one, you have the option to add a profile picture. And so if you add a profile picture there, and then you turn off your video in a meeting, that's the picture that will display for Zoom. So normally, you know, if you turn off the video, it just has the name, but your profile picture will go there if you've added one. Um, and then I think that's what Ernesto has done right now. There's also an option to change your, um, virtual background, but I think that just stays as long as your video is on. I think once you turn your video off for that, you lose your background. Well, we're going to share the Zoom account. Like each, you know, person is not going to have their own Zoom account, right. right? So, right. So if you didn't want it to be your face, you know, then you could pick like an image of your parish or like if you can see Ernesto's picture right now, um, it looks like a cross and a Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be like a picture of your face. So you're saying do that when you set up the profile? Yes, if you want, if you want to have a picture displayed instead of your name when you're not having your video on. Yeah, because, you know, multiple people are going to use it. So right. I don't want it to say, 
Marsha Johnson when it's really Mary or what, you know, someone else. Right. That's a great point, Marsha. So if you, so like right now I'm on the lifelong formation um, Zoom account. So I wouldn't want to make the profile picture um, a picture of my face because maybe Clarissa is going to use it next for something completely unrelated to me. Um, so if you're sharing it with others in your parish, then it's best to pick an image um, of your parish or a religious image to use uh, for the profile. So that would be the same reason why we see lifelong formation instead of your name. Uh, so that is the name of the Zoom account. So you can change your name too. So like um, if I wanted to change mine right now to say Emily McDonnell, uh, I would hover over my picture on the top here and there's those three dots. And I click on those three dots and one of the options is rename. And so I could enter in my name and then okay and now my name's Emily McDonnell. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. Yeah so that so Emily that might be something to practice and that's something that that we found this summer that was good to not allow children to do that because we didn't want kids to be renaming themselves these crazy things. We wanted mm -hmm. their their names. So that's an, actually an important uh, little feature to go over those three little dots. So when everybody you know hov hovers over, and they see the dots. Next that's to a button. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point, Judy. So we'll when we split out into breakout rooms, I think I'll have a we'll instruct everyone to practice that as well. Uh, just so you know for yourself. And then something to note that Jeannie just brought up is if you don't want your students to be able to change their name, then one of the settings that you have to set up is to not allow them to be able to do that. So we were talking about at the beginning, once you log in, there's different uh, tabs, there's your profile, there's the meetings, that's where you go to make all your meetings. One of those is settings, and that's one of the settings that you can enable or not enable. All right, I see. Annabelle has her hand up. Hi. Um, yeah, I have a question. Does it matter what the computer, because I'm using an iPad right now. Okay. Um, whatever you're saying is, can I get that options also, or it's different in iPad to the computer? Um, I think as long as your iPad has a camera, um, it should be the same options. It might present a little different. I know um, later on in the presentation, uh, we're going to talk about the raising hand feature, which you seem to already know how to use, which is great, um, and how it looks different depending on if you're on a phone or like an iPhone, an Android, or a computer. So you should be able to do all the same things on um, an iPad, but the layout of the screen when you look at it might look a little different. Yeah, and also I noticed that um, every time I join a Zoom meeting Hi. and I can see my face, but this time I cannot see <laughs> or the other participants. There's no option here that I can see everyone face like, you know, at the same time. Right, so that's because we're in a presentation mode right now. Uh, Clarissa is sharing her screen. Okay, okay. So that's why you can see this PowerPoint here. But once we stop that, then you can be able to pick your gallery view and see everyone's faces. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Great question. Marsha, did uh, I, you still have your hand up. Did we get to your question or no? For one thing, I was trying to figure out how to lower my hand and I couldn't do that. But in the presentation mode, I still was able to change my view, so I can still, I can see everybody's face. Oh, you can see the full gallery view? Yes, yes, we, we oh. can, yeah, because if you go up to the, up to the very top right, yeah. you either have exit, yeah, full I, I screen, can, yeah, or speaker I can, view. Right. So, so if you go to speaker view, that's different than the other one. Great, see, look at these guys chiming in. Thank you for sharing, Marsha and Jeannie. Did you, did you lower my hand or how? Because I was trying to lower my hand. and. Uh, so I have the option to, but I did not this time. I did. Clarissa did. Oh, Clarissa did. Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you accidentally. Uh, I think. You... So 
raise your hand, you can't unraise your hand. I mean, you can't lower your hand. You no? can. You have to go back down. And I think there's a a feature where it says you could lower your hand. I can't do it now just because I'm in pres I, I'm in host mode. But uh, there is a way you can lower uh, your hand if you want to practice lowering it. For those of you who are wondering what we're talking about with these raising and lowering hands, we're going to practice that later on too. So don't worry if you don't know what we're talking about quite yet. Marsha, I'm assuming you're practicing your lowering hand. I'm going to go with yes, but if you have another question, just unmute yes, yourself. Yes, I can't and speak. lower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, one more thing before we move on from this page is next to your mute button, which everyone found um, perfectly and we were practicing that, there's a little arrow there. At any point, um, if you want to check your audio settings, so that's what microphone you're connected to and what speaker you're connected to, those are the main two ones, uh, that's where you would go to check that. Uh, right when you're joining a meeting, it asks you about that. Um, but if you need to change during the meeting, let's say your Bluetooth headphones died, that's where you'd go to switch. All right, any questions on audio or video before we move on? All right, Clarissa. Okay, so Catholic identity in virtual spaces. Uh, as you know, this is a Zoom for Ministry Settings webinar, and we really wanted to emphasize how to use this in a Zoom setting, specifically uh, faith formation, religious ed, catechetical, or even youth ministry. So the first piece is always try and remember to use an appropriate background when you teach or host meetings, and so that's physically, like so... Uh, in the spaces that I'm in and Emily's in, there's nothing um, inappropriate hanging behind us. Uh, obviously, like try and find a, a non-busy place, a place that isn't so loud, not, not your kitchen table, especially if there's other people and, you know, kids running around, but definitely use um, a quiet corner, something with like a plain type of background. If you're able to sit in a space and maybe hang a cross behind you or a religious icon maybe sitting on a shelf behind you or something like that, something that indicates to the students and the families that this time is time for religious ed. Um, another thing that you could do is use images in your PowerPoint slides. And so much like we did our opening prayer and we had a couple images there, that is a way to integrate uh, Jesus more into our presentations, depending on the art you use or even using a template. And so maybe the template that your catechists use for virtual religious education, every template has a saint or an icon or something that uh, indicates to them that this is a reminder that, you know, this time is so much different than the other time. The other thing you can, might think about doing is using your background on your PowerPoint screen, uh, on your PowerPoint slides or some, whatever you're using for presentation to maybe reflect the liturgical year. Uh, that could be another good way to reinforce the, um, some concepts around the liturgical year and uh, during our catechetical spaces. Uh, so I'm sure that some of you who've, who have already taught uh, via Zoom in the spring maybe have utilized some of these or other ideas to kind of bring, you know, Jesus to the forefront of our classrooms. Um, questions about that? Okay. Uh, can I just add on there, Clarissa? Sorry. Just something that I found helpful. Um, so I live in a small apartment so the kitchen table is the only option for me um, and so I don't know if you've noticed but if I just let my screen go normal my TV's in the background my husband like he is now could be on it and having a background like that that's moving is distracting so even just making sure you're switching your screen um, can help another option is if you don't want what is in your background to be showing at all. You can use a virtual background um, and you can pick a religious image for that as well to help um, make 
sure your Catholic identity is known in your virtual space, like Clarissa was saying. Um, if you want to add a virtual background, uh, in the bottom left where you have your video camera, you hit that little arrow and it'll give you some options. One of them being choose virtual background. And so you can pick to add a virtual background in there. Um, you can add, so they give you some options. Um, the options they give you are not, um, <laughs> not in line necessarily with your Catholic identity, but you are more than welcome to add images of your own and then use them. Um, for those, you would want to download them before the meeting. So if you look at Marsha's screen, she's got some grass going on back there. Um, you can try it for yourself right now if you'd like to change your background up, mm. uh, but that's another option. Again, that was an option that we did not allow our children to utilize, we, we enable that. Um, but I know my assistant often uses our background for our own parish or St. Peter's Square in Rome, you know, so it's kind of fun. And, and Gloria, Gloria has the Golden Gate right there. Look at that. Okay, good. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up again, Jeannie. Um, some of these things that we're suggesting, it's also good to keep in mind what would your students be thinking. And so uh, preventing them from changing their backgrounds is probably a good idea as well. All right. Question. Yes. Could, uh, I know you're recording. Are the participants able to record as well? Um, for ours, I think the setting is right now that they are. Cl Clarissa, I'm not 100% sure there. Um, I've got to check. Okay. Um, set up right now. I mean, I know I am, but I don't know. Um, when I click on it, if I can add, I see the uh, communication. Please request recording permission from the meeting host. And if I click OK, I guess you will get the notification. Okay, and you perfect. Can, you can give me access or not to. Thank you, sister. So it seems like we don't have it allowed right now. Um, I would recommend that for your students so you don't have them recording random parts of the meeting. Um, and like sister was saying, if they try to, uh, they'll get some sort of notification that they don't have the permission to do that. So I, I'm working, I just tried to switch uh, my background do a virtual background with the pencils uh, drawing of St. Mary's and Lake Forest. But since I'm on an HP, you actually have, I think you have to do a green background first or a blue background. And then on top of that, add your virtual one. So um, a, an apple is really clean to change your background. But well, you know, I'm kind of sparkling behind me here. It also Let's depends on the lights in your room. I don't have any green back background, any green wall, and it's clear enough i think is it okay so i should turn off my lights okay good thank you i think it's also your window behind you is gonna make it hard for you Jeannie. Yes, yeah, so i think sister nidia is right there uh the light coming in could distort the image but that's something you can play around with um all right so oh clarissa will you go back one for me Okay, so now we're gonna talk about um, some specific management tools for the classroom. Um, like the first time, we're gonna go uh, further into detail on some of these and have images to show you exactly what I'm talking about in the coming slides. Uh, so the first thing we wanna point out is you should lock your Zoom room once all your participants are there. This makes sure that no one is coming into your room who is not supposed to be there um, and you can just say, uh, stay assured through the meeting that no one's entering without actively monitoring it once you lock your classroom. Uh, so to do that, you click on your participants at the bottom. And then once that pulls up your participant list, you go to those three dots at the bottom of the list. And as a host, one of your options would be to lock the meeting. So if I click that now, I can lock the meeting, no one else can join. Um, I'm going to unlock it now in case you need to come back and forth, but that just makes it so 
your meeting is set and you're not actively monitoring, making sure that you have no one else joining. That's really important for the safety of our young people. Um, the next one is the participant bit bar. Um, it's a great tool uh, to have your students utilize and help you keep track of things too if you uh, want to use it. So when we say participant bar, we're talking about uh, those little icons that pop up if you open your participant section. It'll show a list of the participants, but then you'll have these little icons that say yes, no, go slower, go faster, more. And so that allows you to have your students uh, indicate things non-verbally to you without having to talk and everyone go through and say something. So if I say, has, does anyone, or check yes or no if you have seen the video that I sent out yesterday. And so everyone could either put yes, see, I have some people hitting yes, some people hitting no. And for me, next to their names, it's showing up with the yes or no, so I can see who has or who has not, depending on what they're answering. Um, this is great um, for students who just want to indicate um, maybe that they need to go slower for something, that they're not understanding it. There's a button for that. Uh, there's also buttons uh, to agree or disagree with something, uh, to applaud, um, to indicate that you need a break, and to indicate that you're away. So that could be, I know when you're in the classroom, maybe you have different hand signals to indicate different things, but that's something that they can do non-verbally without uh, breaking the flow of the conversation or the discussion or you talking to them. Um, this is another reason why it's great to have two adults in the meeting if possible, because while I'm talking here and talking to the group as a whole, maybe Clarissa could be going through and reaching out to those who answered no, or like um, just keeping an eye on those com or those um, icons that different people have indicated. Here in the icon section is also where you have that raise the hand feature that some people have started using already during this meeting because they're awesome. So when you ask a question, if you don't want the students just all trying to talk at once, or if you want a more organized way to call on them, then that's a great feature to use. Uh, like when people were using it during this, when we say if there are any questions, some of the people are using that raise the hand feature to know that they have something that they wanna share with the class. Uh, so we'll have pictures of uh, that uh, moving forward as well. Um, next thing is the chat function. So the chat you can access at the bottom of your screen as well. One of those options is the chat. Uh, you guys, uh, most of you started the meeting by entering something in it. Uh, so it's great to use to get everyone involved in a kind of low key way because if you're trying to get everyone to talk, it could take a long time to go through our 37 participants. Uh, it also gives students um, some think time, some process time while they're typing things in, which is great. Um, one thing to point out there is you can control who can chat to who. So if you go to the chat, you click on that, in the bottom right, you see those three dots of the chat once it opens up. Um, and so then I can control as the host who the participants can chat with. So right now I have it on, everyone can chat with everyone publicly and privately. So that means um, Ernesto can send a message to the whole group, or he could send a message to Sister Nidia privately and no one else would see it. Um, we recommend, <laughs> hello Ernesto, uh, we recommend uh, not having that feature on for your students. Um, there's one where you can pick for them to chat with everyone publicly, but that means, uh, that means that everyone would see what they type. So we recommend not doing the one where they can chat with each other privately. Uh, there's also the option to pick that they can only chat with the host. So if you were trying to do um, a quiz just to see where students were, to do a, some sort of formative assessment, and you didn't want them to be able to put answers in the chat, uh, you can turn that to chat to host only. So that's an important feature for you as the host to keep in mind. 
Um, this is a long list. I'm gonna take a pause there. Does anyone have any questions on those first three? So locking the room, uh, the participant bar, or the chat function. Hey, uh, go ahead. Yeah, how do you how do you lock the room? Okay, so you go, you won't be able to see it right now in this meeting because you're not the host. So only the host. So you have to be it. the host. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's or the co-host. Co um, so right now I'm, the, I'm actually the co-host and Clarissa is the host. So um, we have some icon that we don't have. Uh, so, so it's not yeah. an icon, but right under where the icons are, there's three buttons for me, one that says invite, one that says mute all, and one that's three dots. And so if I click on the three dots, one of the options is to lock the meeting. Okay. So it's kind of in the more section of the participants. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Kathleen, I see you have your hand up. As, um, it, when you're doing the yes and no, and can all the participants see the answers, each other's answers? Or is only the host sees the answers? If you do a yes or no poll. Um, that's actually a good question. I don't know. Um, can you guys, uh, can someone, one of the participants, take a look right now at your participants list and see if you see little check marks or? I, I did. I did. I could see if somebody answered yes or no. Okay. Okay. I so. clicked on the three buttons, and I then I clicked, and then I saw all the people who are in the meeting. Okay. Perfect. So yes, it seems. And, and for the chat function, you can change that during the meeting? Yes. Yeah, so everyone or just to the host, but during the meeting, you can change that. Correct. Um, so, so if you want to do different things during the meeting, you can change back and forth between that. Um, you can also, uh, during the meeting, I know we were talking about this earlier, if you forget to make one of your settings that you don't want to allow people to rename themselves, if you go to the participants and then go to those three dots, one of your options would be to allow that or not as well. So you can change that in the meeting. All right, any other questions on those first three? Yeah, are you actually going to show us how to do all this stuff besides your PowerPoint? I mean, because I'm so totally lost. What, what were you looking, what were you specifically looking to do? I had on training, like, like step by step on beginning to end, how to set everything, like literally how to maneuver all your stuff. Gotcha. Uh, you're going to get time in the breakout room to do some hands-on stuff in small groups, but some of the stuff in the beginning, like the scheduling and um, the like audio visual type stuff, you know, turn your camera on, turn your mic on. Um, some of that stuff was covered a little bit in the preview, in the preview video that we sent out. Um, so that's why we sped through some of that. Uh, some of the stuff here, we can kind of show you pictures, but the tutorial, um, if you're interested, I can, we can find um, Zoom video tutorials to walk through exactly uh, how to set up a poll, I guess a breakout room. So um, basically, we're kind of like on our own and play with Zoom and kind of figure it out. It's a little bit of both. I mean, so the preview video was meant to give you uh, like a basic understanding. And then this tutorial or this section was really meant to kind of go deeper and see like how you would use it in a religious ed setting. And then if there were still other things, then yeah, you would probably have to get used to the Zoom um, before you hosted your own Zoom class. Right. Because We are, are, are going to practice. It would be easier room. for us to learn all this stuff if we like literally, if you literally shared your screen with all of us on as you're doing it, as you're actually setting things up, you know, like a live training thing, sharing your screen on how to you know, how to do this, how to do that. Besides the PowerPoint, do the actual settings of everything. Um, we can definitely look into that. Maybe there's a, a part two 
Um, we're going to send out a survey, but I think the way in which this, this Zoominar uh, was structured for tonight, it was structured with a little bit of uh, slides and then a little bit of practice that you're going to see here in a little bit. But um, in, the, in the evaluation form, that is something that you could let us know when we're trying to get a sense of what other people need um, and then kind of maybe adjust or go from there. You know, if I can just um, invite everyone in the Archdiocese in Vicariate One, um, we have already done the Zoom meetings. We've already done e-learning on the digital platform uh, successfully this summer with my, at St. Mary's, we had six catechists and we had 84 students and we learned. We learned how to use these Zoom things. We had three experienced teachers and three teachers who had no idea what they were doing. And we learned it and we locked the classrooms down. We sent out the parents, the parents um, a, a list of what we expected from them. The children need to be dressed for the classroom at a table, at a desk, no other devices. They signed a contract. On top of that, we sent all our catechists had all the settings that, that to shut it down. So, so there was no um, a chance of any kind of, of um, um, to hurting the catechetical environment that we had set up. And it was unbelievably successful. And starting tomorrow night, we have our, um, how to run a, su a successful technical meeting. And then the next week we have classroom management and then classroom ideas. So all, we, we've started this in Vicariate One and we have invited ev everyone. So all of the lifelong uh, leaders of all of the different vicariates have been sent the invitation. But if anybody wants an invitation, I would be more than glad to send it to them. We have four catechists that are experienced and we have all of that hands-on stuff because, you know, as a DRE, nobody was more scared, Marianne, than this, than me, that this is going to like blow up in my face. It's going to be, it's going to be awful. Kids are going to be annotating on top of PowerPoints and all the horror stories that you, and we didn't want that. We wanted to to really protect the integrity of our religious ed. So if you want to email me, I would be glad to send out the invites and you know, get right on, you know, get right on it. So and we're all in this together. We all have to support each other. Thanks, Janine. It's but, just, it's not, I'm, I'm not afraid of it. It's just, it's more uh, helpful when it's a live training uh, session uh, versus PowerPoints. Okay, okay Mary, and I sent you a note in at work. It's just, it's, it's just. Mary, and I sent you a note in the chat. Yeah, I got that. Okay, so yep. we we can practice it all together. Okay. okay. Yeah, and also, and and our our what we're calling our three sessions. It's called um, Escape the Fear Academy because you know as DREs we want our catechists to be comfortable and to bring them along. So it's you know we're we're we're, we're here for you. you know? Uh, I was going to say at the end of the PowerPoint tonight, uh, all those classes that you're talking about, Jeannie, um, there's a little paragraph that we're using to describe. Um, so uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, it will be included, the links will be included in the PowerPoint. And then I know, I know Moto E5, you shared your name earlier, but I've forgotten what it is. I see you have your hand up. Yes, my name is Marilyn. Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. I attempted to do that pre, um, what like the homework, if you will, that um, video. And I finally got through the link, but all I saw was the speaker. I could see her looking at her computer and she's describing like you're describing, but the same experience. You could not see the actual computer screen to see what she was pointing at. Um, that's interesting. When I watched it, I, it was just the screen for me. Um, so I was like just following along with her screen. Um, kind of like, it sounds like what Marianne was looking for here. Um, walking through those steps. I wonder, I, I don't know why that would be. Clarissa, do you have any idea with that? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I'd have to go back and look at the, uh, look at the video. Um, I just watched it today and I saw her and all the printed, whatever she was saying was also printed on the side. And then everything that she was describing was in her PowerPoint presentation. So I don't know what, and I just watched it this morning. 
Yeah, well, I, I had the, the same experience where, you know, I she was speaking. I could see all of the, on the right-hand side, all of the written information or all of, you know, what she was saying in, in words, but I didn't see any of her PowerPoint slides. Oh. Yeah, that was all on the yeah. left. Okay, yeah, I didn't see that unless, and I was thinking, should I be clicking on something but I didn't have anything to click on? So I don't know. I'll go back into it and see. That's so interesting. I can put, um, when we go into the breakout rooms too, I can go back and find the link that I used to watch it. Cause when I was watching it, I watched it earlier today as well. And I just saw her zoom screen and like heard her talking about it, but she was walking through step-by-step step all of these things. Um, so I'm sorry that it sounds like multiple people did not have that experience of the preview video. I saw that too, but then when she referenced the things that you could download because it was recorded, you couldn't download any of those papers. Oh, I see. To get the, you know, she said these are all written out. And because it was recorded, there's no place to download, like from the chat, because there was no chat. OK, I think she's. That, that video from yesterday, that's all it was. It was just a, a her talking and doing a presentation on a PowerPoint. That's all that was. So, but I, I saw her screen and what she was pointing to, but she referred to but downloading yeah, this direction. She was pointing to what was on her screen that she created PowerPoint on. Okay, well, we can take a look at that um, either while we're in the breakout rooms or before we send out um, this PowerPoint to you guys to find something that, uh, find out what exactly that is. I think Clarissa might be looking at that right now. Um, why don't we, Clarissa, if you could hit the next slide for our PowerPoint, those next ones, polls, screen share, reactions, and breakout, uh, we're all gonna have uh, pictures to show you for those. So we can go to the next slide. Okay. So to share your screen, oh, back one, Clarissa. Uh, to share your screen, you wanna, you are gonna have an option down at the bottom again to hit the share screen function. Um, Zoom is really easy. You don't have to download anything beforehand. You just have to have it um, pulled up on your computer and then you can cho choose what you wanna share, uh, whether it's a specific, let's say PowerPoint or you wanna share your whole desktop, your whole computer screen. Um, and so once you're in the sharing screen mode, once you've clicked on what you wanna share, your bar that has all the options at the bottom changes its view. So then once you're in the sharing mode, this first picture shows you what your status bar looks like, what your bar that has all the options at the bottom now looks like. Um, so you still have some of the functions that you would have now, like participants, excuse me, if you hit that more, you would have the chat and reactions as well. Um, but you now have two options that are new. You have this annotate option. Uh, so that allows you to draw on the screen while you're sharing or highlight certain features or write on it. Um, and then the pause share option. That is if you want to pause your screen so the people who are looking at your screen still see what you paused it as, but then you need to do something else on your screen. So if I wanted you guys to still see this uh, managing the Zoom space slide on my PowerPoint, but I needed to do something else on my screen, I would hit pause. You guys would still see this, but I could do something over here on the side. And then when I'm ready and done with what I was doing, I could unpause it and be back to live with you guys. The bottom picture there um, just talks about some of the different um, uh, participant bar options. And then the lock the meeting is shown there too. So. This is after you've hit participants on the bottom there. This is your participant um, section, the bottom of that that's pulled up. So these were what we were talking about earlier, the yes and no buttons go slower. And then if you've clicked that more, I know it's tiny, but that's the more that's clicked or the three buttons. Um, and one of the options is to lock the meeting. Does anyone have any questions on uh, these two? Oh, Clarissa, it looks like you've put something on our PowerPoint. Oh, like a, a green line? Uh, I see a 
gray box. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions on that, so we can move to the next one. That shared screen, the host has to enable if you want uh, any of the participants to be able to share the screen. The host has to do that to enable it. Otherwise, the participants can't share. Anything. That's correct. Thank you, Teresa. Um, if you want your students or someone who is a participant in your meeting to be able to share, you have to enable that. Um, that's something that you could enable beforehand um, in your settings or when you're making the meeting as well. All right, next, another feature that you have is polls. If you have a Zoom account that is one of the paid or pro versions, the polls feature does not come with the free or basic version. Um, but if you have one of the paid Zoom accounts, then you could use this feature too. Um, you set up a poll before class begins and you set up a poll for the specific class meeting. So when you're on your Zoom page, if you go to your meetings tab and then from there you select the specific meeting that you want to create the poll for and you scroll to the bottom of that page and that's where you create the poll. Uh, the poll is a cool feature to use for a couple different things. One, um, kind of as an icebreaker, just something fun for the students to do. Um, two, to survey the students and get them to see other people's general responses. They won't be able to see people's individual responses, but they'll see the percentage of people that voted for the same thing they did. Um, and then three, if you want to use this as a, excuse me, quizzing method, you can do that as well. Um, depending on whether you make the poll anonymous or not will depend on if you can see who answered what individually. So if you want to use it for quizzing, you got to make sure that you're not making it an anonymous poll. Uh, so how it works is you can add up to 10 questions and you type in your question and then you type in your answer responses. And so the type of questions you can ask are either multiple choice where you ask a question and they can pick as many of the options as they want, or a single choice where you ask a question and they only can choose one of the options. Then you, once you've created the poll in the meeting, um, if you want to use the poll, you would go to your poll section and I'm gonna do this for us in one second. We have one question on our poll um, then you hit launch and the poll will go out to all your participants. As the host, you can see how many people have responded to it. And so you know how to wait, or sorry, if you need to wait still for people to answer. And then after it's closed, you can choose whether or not to share it with the class. So I'm going to send you a poll right now. So right now I can see that I have attendees viewing it uh, and I can see the number of people that voted and the percentage of people that have voted so far. Um, I can also see how many responses are for each answer choice. Well, Emily, don't hold back on the results. We, we can't wait to see, hear them. Well, I still have six of my 30 people who have not responded. So I'm giving them a few more seconds here. <laughs> But then I will share it with all of you. You're going to have to speak up. All right. Doesn't she have to, she has to choose them? Yes, I have a question. Can you use, in per class, can you use more than one poll? A great question, yes. So I think it's up to, oh, I want to say 25 um, polls you can create per class. Thank you. Um, if you want to go more than that, like throughout the year, you'll just have to delete some of your earlier polls. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Mary, for that question. That also brings up another point. Um, if you have, let's say you're teaching, um, oh, I forget who it was. Someone at the beginning was saying they're teaching first communion class and a confirmation class. If you create your questions for your first communion class 
you can't automatically transfer them to your confirmation class. You have to create new questions for your confirmation class. So for every meeting that you make, you have to make a separate poll. Well, hopefully those questions would be different from the first communion to the conference. Yeah, <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> for that example, that uh, wasn't a great one. Some of them are a little close, so they, they, they different. They're a little more mature for confirmation, but for communion, you're reviewing, in confirmation, you're reviewing some things that you first introduced <laughs> in the communion class. In right. Life, anyway. Well, and if you wanted to do like a fun icebreaker, like what's your favorite ice cream or something, uh, you would have to type that out for both of them. All right, so I'm going to end the polling. And so now, okay. All right, so I just ended the poll, so that means no one else can um, respond to it. And now I have the option to just leave it on my screen. I know what everyone answered. I know what the favorite season is, or I can share it with everyone else, which I'm gonna do now. And so now you can see that fall is our winner. And so you can also see 4% of people really like all the seasons too, which is great. And so that's just, um, I mean, a fun example, but you can use this um, even within your lessons to put out questions to your class. All right, any question on the polls there? Where do you go to find the poll to create, to create the poll on Zoom? Because I haven't done the polls before. So after you've created a meeting on okay. Zoom, you have to go to that meeting and scroll to the bottom of that meeting. It'll say like the title, the date and time. And if you scroll to the bottom, if you have the paid version, the option will be to create a poll for that meeting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, Any other? Emily, that this this is something that we brought up within our you know the DREs. That is the DREs are going to have to decide if there's a parish. Zoom meeting, you know, Zoom account that everybody will use, or if everyone will get the, all the categories will get their own pr private one. And there, I mean, there's no cost to it because they're all free, you know. Mm -hmm. But but that's that's something that catechists that we're going to, you know, un let catechists understand that they take their direction from the DRE, that's the catechetical leader. How how many, um, as you just brought up, the paid, you know, account mm -hmm. over the you know the free account. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. All right, any other questions there? Yes, quick question. Yes. Could you create questions while the meeting is going on? Sorry, I didn't hear you. And the, well, the question was, uh, could we create uh, questions while the meeting's going on? And the answer is yes. You can create, you can auto-populate polls, and so you could do stuff before. Or you could kind of do it like the one that I created for tonight. I created uh, after the meeting had started. Um, for your uh, for your classrooms, um, especially if you only have that one adult in the classroom, it's going to be easier to create them before. Um, especially if you're trying to do questions that you've like planned into your lesson. Um, but like Clarissa said, if you have those two adults in there, she went in and added that question while we were already in progress. Any other questions? All right, Clarissa, you want to go to the next one? Oh, so this is just um, showing you on the paid version where it would be the polls is just one of the options down at the bottom. Um, and then this is what I saw, the question that we had already put in and then the launch poll. Emily, I've got a question. Yes, Mary. Um, from the last, <clears throat> if we had six catechists on one account, can there be more than one person giving a Zoom call at the same time? That's a great question, no. So we actually had someone who was doing a Zoom call on our Office of Life Information account from 6.30 until 6.45, and we couldn't start our meeting until they were done. It will 
if you start their meeting before the first meeting is finished, it will end that meeting for them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One idea that we maybe talked about, especially if you're going to be sharing accounts, is if you, this is Clarissa talking, let me turn my video on, uh, you could maybe start all at the same time and then break the grades up into different rooms. And if your program was small enough, you know, you could, that is one way you can maybe get around um, that, uh, that hurdle, I guess. If that makes any sense. Right, and then this tip we already talked about, um, you can do more than one poll for your meeting um, and just switch between them. Next slide, Clarissa. All right, so this just shows our raising hand function. Um, we have seen people use this all throughout our meeting, uh, so it's really helpful uh, when asking people have questions. So we just wanted to show different formats, what it looks like. So this is for a PC um, computer. You click your participants, like, uh, which is circle. Oh, there, so thank you. Uh, which is circled at the bottom there. It opens up your participants side tab over here and then raise hand uh, is your first reaction there. All right, and then the next slide should show it from the different uh, view, the, uh, I'm blanking on the iPhone view, sorry, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, so then this is if you're on a phone. So iPhone is on the left, Android is on the right. Um, if you want to raise your hand, you can still do that from the phone. You would go to your more, those three dots, and then hit raise hand from there. Um, I see in the comments, um, Jeannie pointed out, uh, if you break into breakout rooms, um, like Clarissa was suggesting, if you have a small group um, who all want to meet at the same time, you can break into breakout rooms for grades. But yes, you would need a Virtus trained adult in each breakout room. Whether you do breakout rooms with different classes or the same class, you need a Virtus um, trained adult in each breakout room. Um, any questions about raising your hand? All right, Clarissa. Okay, all this talk about breakout rooms, we're gonna uh, uh, divide folks into breakout rooms. And in the breakout rooms, uh, we want you to share your screen with the rest of the participants, uh, share a file in the chat, and so you kind of attach a file and upload it. Uh, and then share one or two ideas that you found helpful with Zoom. I know some folks here, are just getting familiar with Zoom and, and I get a, a, a clear sense that some people are, have been using Zoom a lot. And so uh, this is a good time to kind of idea share. Uh, and then when you come out of your breakout rooms, we're gonna come back into the large group and we are gonna ask to share like the best tip with the, um, with the participants. So I will divide you into breakout rooms and Let's see here. While Chris is doing that, um, as the host, you can float back and forth between breakout rooms. So you might see Clarissa and I um, pop in and out of your breakout room. Everyone else uh, will have to go to the breakout room that the host assigns. And I know we're pushing over on time. So if you have to leave, we completely understand. Thank you for being with us. I know people are putting that in the chat. Welcome back, everybody. Right, here we go. The room is filling up. Uh, I know that we are over time, and I'm sure some of you uh, have to get going in the next minute or so, but I did want to share with you uh, that if you wanted to type out a one or two good tips in the chat, please feel free. Uh, I know we wanted to do some big group sharing, but sometimes a chat is a great way to share information. So if you have any one or two really great tips, go ahead and share that now as I'm talking about kind of what's next. So I, um, 
you should see the PowerPoint screen in front of you that has ongoing support and Office of Lifelong Formation. Chris, uh, we don't see the PowerPoint. <laughs> there's, no, there's no PowerPoint, yeah. Okay, good. That's exactly what I, I needed to hear. Uh, do you see it now? Yes. Perfect. Great. So the Office of Lifelong Faith Formation is going to be hosting evening office hours on Tuesdays uh, from 4.30 to 5.30. Uh, next week we won't, but the following week we will. Next week we're doing our team's training and then after that we're going to start hosting our uh, Lifelong Faith Formation support meetings. And we're going to be answering questions either in Zoom or Teams. So if at any point you or one of your catechists needs um, some help navigating either Zoom or Teams, know that they can come on and find us at the Zoom link below. Uh, the meeting ID is below and there's also a passcode. And so we'll be doing this until the end of September and then we'll reevaluate at that time if we need to do more trainings or if we need more office hours but know that we want to continue to support you uh, in your journey of like becoming a virtual religious ed classroom. This slide will be sent out with the other materials. And so if you didn't get a cop, if you didn't get a chance to write everything down, you will be receiving a copy of material at the end of the week, or even maybe sometime tomorrow uh, with this information, and perhaps the recording. Uh, from there, just know that next week we're going to be offering Teams training very similar to this. Uh, the link and information will be sent out early next week. Uh, we do have some classes that you might want to attend. Uh, there's one on how to run a successful digital meeting. The registration link is going to be in the PowerPoint. There is virtual classroom methodology uh, on the 20th and teaching ideas on the 26th. And then that last page, we have some Zoom tutorial links. Uh, and there's also going to be a session on working with students with disabilities in religious ed classrooms. This is going to be a recorded webinar. We don't have the date yet, but know that it is coming. And we will be sharing out our virtual, uh, our safe environment on virtual platforms as part of our material as well. Let's see, is there a question? Um, let's see. So, uh, any other last minute questions? The only thing left we have after this is just a quick closing prayer. Um, I would just like, I, I would like to say that oh, I would just like to say that I um, those virtual not the virtual the classes of the technology the classroom management and the teaching tips are all the ones that we were talking about that we're doing in Vicariate One. We have invited the whole archdiocese to attend them and their catechists teaching cat catechists how to run these things. And we're not only talking about Zoom, but we're talking about Google Classroom, Flipgrid, and we're kind of the kind of kind of um, Clarissa and Emily have kind of set us, you know, you know, kind of set the Zoom thing, that the Zoom thing is how you interact with people, but when you want to get the, you want to get the videos out and the assignments and the assessments and the family engagements, that's where those other pieces can, can, um, can, uh, can, can help. So everybody's invited, so. Will you be sending that link to us, Jeannie? I, I sent it out, it's in the chat. I sent okay. it out er earlier, so hopefully, I don't know, Clarissa, it, it, it's in that PowerPoint there. The next, the first class is tomorrow night at seven o'clock, you know? Okay, so, thank you. Yeah. You know, I mean, unfortunately we just got the guidelines, what, 10 days ago, you know, about these online classes are a joke. We can't do online classes. I mean, I mean, we can't do in-person classes because once a month, you know, what, what, what is that, you know? So these are things that you can do every single week with, with your class, with your families. So um, we're hoping that um, we'll be able to, as, as it's called, escape the fear that we're, uh, help a catechist to, to be able to, you know, on the grassroots, understand the digital platforms and how to integrate it into, into teaching and, and help children to encounter Christ. Thank you. Great, thanks. And also, I wanted to say um, thanks for sending the link to that video um, in the chat, because I did click on that, and then I could see 
um, what was her name, Elise, I think, who had done, who had done the presentation. I could see her slides. Because when I was watching it, I'm like, well, she's very interesting, but, but I couldn't see anything, you know, um, beyond her and then, you know, just all the words, you know, so, so thanks, you know, and this has been very helpful. Sometimes, you know, I get kind of nervous clicking on stuff, you know, because I don't know if I'll find my way back, but you gave us the opportunity to, you know, really try things. So I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, last, uh, so we're going to pray. And then if anyone has any questions, I can definitely stay on for a little bit uh, to walk you through that, or at least yeah. help you find the answer. Um, There's a really quick before we go to prayer to um, those office hours that Clarissa mentioned, if you want a more one on one walk through something, then I would recommend going to those too. If you get to that point and still for whatever reason, want someone's help, like with how to share a screen and want someone with you working one-on-one, -on -one, that's where I would go to. Thanks. No, thank you. Okay, so the prayer that I've pulled up for us is a uh, prayer for ending meetings, uh, just as we kind of transition. Uh, so, <laughs> Um, we can begin as we do with all things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. All together. Word of day, Word of day and night, of beginnings and endings. As we prepare to conclude this meeting, we once again lift our hearts to you, the divine source of all life. We thank you for the gifts that have been present within this act of service to you, God. We are grateful for the gifts of fellowship and understanding of mutual respect and shared vision of perseverance and insight into the common concerns we share. For these and all other graces, we, we are thankful. thankful as, as you have you blessed, have blessed our, our coming together now bless, now bless our, departure our departure and journeys, journeys home. homeward may, may your, your blessings, blessings be upon us, us. In, in the name of the father, father and, of and of the son and of the, the holy spirit, spirit. Amen. Amen. amen all right well thank you all so much i will hang out for about five or ten minutes if you have burning questions uh, we will try and send some stuff out uh, tomorrow afternoon, um, along with a recording of this pod or podcast, the video. Thank you, everyone, for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank yeah. you, ladies. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.